The following podcast is brought to you exclusively by the Arad Rob Radio Network. Through the years, we all remember when we first witnessed a national tragedy. This is Dan Rather, CBS News in New York, with a special report about what apparently is an explosion of the space shuttle Challenger this morning, uh, a minute and 12 seconds uh, into the launch. We remember the good times and the bad times through either a song, a TV show, just a good old boy, never meaning no harm, a monumental sports achievement. Or even the smell of a particular food from when we were young. Do all beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions, and a sesame seed bun. Welcome to the show that will take you on a journey through time to relive those iconic moments. Welcome to RTW Rewind, where old school rules. So, without any further delay, let's introduce you to the host of the show. Red Rob Rob Francois. Hey guys, welcome back to RTW Rewind. This is episode number 459. Even though you haven't seen me in a while. We are back. It is Rad Mania 6 week here on the Rad Rob Radio Network. Five days of shows leading up until WrestleMania 40 in which I'll be doing the post-game wrap-up show for night one and night two. But obviously, before I do that, we have to have day one-ish. And that's what this is. I would like to sp- uh, bring out my very special guest. I've done several shows with him in the past, but it's been quite a while since we got together uh, and talked wrestling. Because, well, who wants to talk wrestling, honestly? Uh, I'm not even sure if he wants to do it now. But uh, regardless of that fact, we're going to do it anyway. So without further ado, because I do, I mean, I do very little, but I'm going to do a lot this week. That was a horrible joke. I'm sorry. Let's bring in our special guest, the one and only opinion haver, Jamie, the vet Williams. Vet, what's going on, brother? Good to have you here, my friend. It's been quite a while. Hi, Rob. Yes, it has. It's good to see you. You look, you look the same. You, you literally don't age. I get older. I look older and you, you. Clearly don't age at all. I don't know how you do it. Clean living and vitamins, Rob. It's uh, it's a recipe for uh, eternal youth. So of the Hulk Hogan three demand, well, actually there's four demands. The training, the prayers, the vitamins, and believe in yourself. Which of those do you actually follow? Training, vitamins, believe in myself. Uh, yeah, those ones. That's fair. Okay. Well, you're going to hell. Yeah. So, yeah. It, it, it is I had a good is. run. <laughs> Did have a good run. Uh, so when I messaged you to uh, to come on for the show, you obviously graciously accepted, and we were having a, a bit of a trouble coming up with the format because, well, who really wants to talk about wrestling? No but, one. Um, you, good night, no, everyone. No one, literally, no thanks one. for having me, Rob. Right, it was this great was a, uh, a pleasure. I'll see you again in another two Follow years. Add opinion haver on Twitter. Uh, or X now. It's it's literally the fucking program. The the platform changed names between the last time we spoke. I mean, it's just uh, that's how long. Yeah, it's and been. and uh, and believe it or not, since that since the very moment that it made the changeover, my DMs don't work, <laughs> which is another source of you know th- we're, we're, we won't bore the people with that that story, but I, I no longer get notified with with uh, when I have a new DM on X. Uh, so I literally had to go to the settings and even though the settings are turned on for push notifications, but now I have to have an email every time I get a DM. So I have to have my email tell me that I got a DM, then I got to go to my DMs and look at it. So it's just brilliant what Elon has done. Um, it's money well spent. Um, but we can't hope to understand his level of genius, so we won't even try. Uh, but, uh. I mean, he's putting freaking rockets in outer space, and you're going to complain about your notifications. Well, he's not doing anything. There's a bunch of very <laughs> uh, intelligent, talented people that are doing all that. Or are they? That's fair. So, uh, Well, maybe if you actually paid for the premium service, you you may get notifications. Maybe oh, that's the one thing that you're missing. Damn. 
I didn't know. I didn't notice that on the list of perks, uh, but you know that that could be my fault. Um, but th- this isn't wrestling. This isn't wrestling, so I'm good talking about it. Uh, whatever you want. To, whatever. <laughs> What'd you have for breakfast this morning? Oh yeah, breakfast. Um, t- vitamins. <laughs> that, okay, uh, that's that's you're, you're ahead of me when it comes to that Man. game. Um, so you had mentioned to me privately, of course that you have a kind of unique story uh, about, what, breaking into WrestleMania and then actually appearing on the show? Yeah. Take us back to uh, to that time in, in your illustrious career or before yeah, this career. is this is pre-career. This is embryonic career, such as it is. But uh, the genesis that's of the right. Um, so I guess we'll go back. It's, it's about... 2003 ish 2004 in that time and in my life i was sort of at a crossroads i'm gonna leave a lot of stuff out but if you need any clarification just stop me and ask anything you need to ask or make any comments you need to make comment during this this story okay um all right so i was i'm sort of at a crossroads where like i'm young enough to do whatever i want but i'm too old to be doing nothing so you have to kind of decide like where you're gonna go right And, um, we had, uh, so the theme of, you know, rad mania is WrestleMania, obviously that's the namesake. Right. And at at that time, you know, I was, you know, just a wrestling fan, big wrestling fan. Like, like I always have been since I'm four years old and I was looking at, you got a WrestleMania 20 coming up in Madison square garden. And I thought, you know, what would, what would, maybe it would be inspirational for me. Maybe I could figure out, like, what do I want to do at this point, you know, with my life? Um, If I was to go, I take a trip to New York, go through that whole thing, you know, kind of like see New York for the first time, go to Madison Square Garden, see a WrestleMania, all things I'd never done. And so I thought, well, I could make that happen. That might, you know, that might be just like the boost I need to, to, to get things going. But um, if you ever tried to go to a WrestleMania, especially back then, I mean, it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't easy. Uh, can yes, I interrupt can. real quick just to, just to give you my uh, experience that weekend? I had bought tickets uh, to that WrestleMania at MSG from a guy in the UK. This is in the infancy of eBay, right. and I got shorted on it. I my dumbass sent him a money order, which can't be tracked. And uh, he never sent me the tickets, so I didn't get to go. The only thing I actually got to do that weekend was the Bagels, Biceps, and Breakfast uh, event that they had uh, at a local hotel. So I was in New York City for a couple hours, and I was back home in Connecticut. Um, so that really, that sucked. That really fucking sucked. And there's nothing they could do about it back then. There was no, no purchase protection or anything like that. So no, it's funny that uh, we were both in town. That well, I wasn't in town. I just... I was going, it was going to be though. It it would have been like a big, a big deal, you know? Um, so I was going to make like a vacation out of it, a big, you know, a big thing. So, but it didn't end up happening, you know, like tickets, tickets sold out instantly. You know, that guy from the UK probably never had them. Uh, it's just, (laughs) you know, how how are you at Madison square garden is not huge, right? Like they weren't doing these, you know, they hadn't done mega stadiums. It's like, I should have tried to get to WrestleMania eight is what I should have done. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, no. yeah, yeah, um, exactly. But, but in this one, you know, you, you've got a, you've got a limited number of seats and everybody's going to want to go. That's already in New York, let alone from all over the world and everything like that. So it, it just, it didn't end up happening. Long story short, I tried, couldn't get them, but that, that, that got me thinking, I was like, okay, well, I can't, I can't go see WrestleMania at Madison Square Garden. Okay, that's fine. Um, but then I started thinking, like, well, what about what about working in some capacity? What can I do to not just be a, a fan, but you know, at this point, I'm looking at WWE, and this is back in 2003 that I'm sitting there watching WWE, and I'm like, this sucks. <laughs> Like, little did I know how far down they could fall. But, like, at that time, I was just like, you know, this is just. So, so I was like, but rather than just complain about it, like, what can I do? Maybe this could be a career path. Um, A lot of people you hear wrestlers, they all talk about the dream. Like, 
they were a kid, they saw wrestling on TV and they knew that right then that's what they wanted to do. Right. You, you've heard that countless sure. times. That was, I did. I was just, I was too lazy to, to actually right, follow yeah. through with it. Um, that was never me. I saw wrestling on TV as a kid and I said, wow, I am so happy to let other people do this and I will watch it. <laughs> and it never even once occurred to me to, for something that I would want to do um, until sort of that moment. Not, not even then, you, never at any point did I say, it's my dream to be a wrestler. I just thought I could contribute somehow. So I didn't right. know what else to do other than, you know, okay, well, I knew OVW was like, that was the place at that time. You know, they were always talking up the, the people that had come from there because those guys like the Cena's and the Batista's and the Orton's, they were all already on WWE TV. So we knew of OVW at this point. And I thought, okay, well, I don't know what I would do. I certainly don't really have a designs on being a wrestler per se, but I knew that if I was ever to be in a position to like, you know, to, to offer ideas that there would be a much better chance of people taking me seriously. If I could relate to them on that level, it's like, I know what a bump feels like. I know what it's like to be in the ring, have a match, you know, those type of things. So I just thought, well, I'll just yeah. do what anybody would do. That's trying to break in the business. However, that would be. And that's how the journey began. So like I picked up and moved from California all the way to Louisville, Kentucky, um, did that whole thing, not knowing a single person, just, you know, the, the many people have this part of the story, uh, is the same, you know, um, right. Getting that training and doing all that stuff. Right. So that's how it started. And, you know, after doing it for a period of time, um, I just didn't know what else there was going to be. So I was like, okay, I guess I'm just doing this now. And I'm still waiting for whatever that path might be to open up, you know, whatever it might be. But funny thing as as I'm around, this is like, you know, it's kind of the wrestling business, but it's like the wannabe wrestling business. <laughs> They're not quite the wrestling right. business, but everybody's very much ready for all the spiteful backstabbing and politicking and everything that they're going to need uh, to survive in the wrestling business. Right. So, I mean, it, it's a must. I mean, you, you literally have to have that, that kind of thick skin because, um, you know, so many, I don't want to say weekend warriors or couch potatoes. I mean, they all, uh, you know, thousands have probably tried it, but I mean, it only, it takes a few like really good, you know, talent to get in. So, um, at least you kind of had that part down. Um, but sorry, I didn't no, mean to interrupt you. Just, it's, that's the thing. It, it's true though. Like people, think it's it's that easy like i can go learn to move or whatever and i can get in yeah. get on tv and blah, blah 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 a lot of them don't know the the psychology and and you know the business itself and what it takes to actually move up the ladder you gotta be pretty fucking tough and pretty catty at times and and politic mm -hmm. you know to, to kind of move your way up which it sucks i mean that's it's not it's a meritocracy way, right it's exactly. the only it's the only it's the only thing that you can do probably that no matter how good you are it doesn't matter Right. So, it, so, right, but right. even then I didn't know that I was like very naive. It was kind of, to me, it was kind of like, um, you know, as a fan, I, I see wrestling for what it is for the most part, at least I thought, you know, right. and I thought, you know, looking at it from the outside, it's like, this is so fucking ridiculous. What I'm looking at, <laughs> like the whole idea of it is insane. Um, right that I just assumed I everybody was going to be a good sport about it because it's so silly that you don't, you don't see how people could take it that seriously. So going and training with this group of students, you know, we're all like hopefuls and you would have that camaraderie and you would just kind of think that you would have a lot in common uh, with everybody doing that because you were probably all inspired by the same kind of things, or you would enjoy the same kind of things. Like for example, Rob, you and I, we've talked about like old movies and cartoons and toys and like all these things like you and I can relate to all that stuff from growing up in a certain time period. Right. 
And you would sure. just expect, well, certainly a wrestler would be a wrestling fan and would just know about wrestling and would also like all those <laughs> old cartoons because it's all the rock and wrestling was part of all that 80s stuff that you and I, you know, like were, were big into as kids growing up. Right. No, not necessarily. There was there was maybe a couple of people that could relate to guys like you and I on that level. And everybody else yeah. was just like, barely even knew about wrestling. And they just saw it and they, they, they liked the rock and stone cold. So they want to be wrestlers now, you know, it's just like, or, or backyard wrestlers who just took it way too far or like, just there's so many, so many people I had nothing in common with you. You would think for right. such a, a, what's the word? Like a niche thing. A niche. Exactly. That yeah. you would have a lot more in common with everybody, but turns out, no. Just like real life, you are very unique compared to a lot of people in that being a pro wrestler does not signify that you would have anything in common with these people. So that was weird. Um, there was guys that were there that I was like, as a wrestling fan growing up, I'm sure you've experienced many times where, uh, you know, some guy would come along and be like, why do you watch that stupid shit? You know, like... <laughs> People would walk yeah, every day. People, yeah. yeah uh, this morning. Uh, people, <laughs> Have you been on? Yeah, people really would yeah. walk into a room and see you watching something and be like, Ugh, what are you well, yeah. fucking <laughs> what a loser? Like, why are you watching this fake shit? Right. And you'd be like, my, my wife tells me that all the time. That's literally why I stopped. Yeah. Watching. It's like, you're just like, well, it, sometimes it's cool. It's just never cool when you're in the room. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> they start doing the worst things whenever other people are in the room. Like that's when that's when May Young gives birth to a hand is like when when you know your wife walks through the room and you're like, oh, it's not always that's like that's this. First, um that's the first thing that popped in my mind when you just said that. Yeah, right. That's funny. So you know, it's like horrible. exactly. So there were people like that that I met that were wrestlers that I was I would have assumed they would be those type of people attitude wise. <laughs> But they're actually right. doing it. They're they're like putting on trunks and just being fucking assholes. And it's like, but you're wrestling. You realize how stupid this is, right? Like we're pretending to fight and you still have this serious attitude. Like, how can you? I just didn't get it. But it's almost it's almost like your fourth wall is just kind of knocked down from from the get go. Right. But this is just I mean, you could chalk this up to just the OVW time period that I was at. I mean, could have been those right. group of guys and there was cool people there too. Don't get me wrong. I don't want to make it sound like everybody there is just a miscreant or whatever that, that has no use in society. I just, I, I thought there'd be people more like me, but either I'm the most unique person ever or which now that I think about it, I probably am. But you are honestly at the time wanting to be somewhat humble. I was like, wow, I, I, these people are very different. Uh, so Whatever. Nonetheless, <clears throat> being there for a period of time, it was cool. You get along with these people. You learn a lot. Obviously, learning with Rip Rogers is probably the best education you can get. If it's, but it's like a language you have to speak. You know, it, you have to learn right. it, or it's just intuitive. Like for me, I kind of understood everything he was saying. For other people, maybe it took a little longer. Some of them never did. Um, but just developing that relationship and him seeing things in me before I see them very Mr. Miyagi like, like where you don't realize that you're when you're painting the house and sanding the floor and, you know, <laughs> painting the fence and, you know, waxing the car, like you don't realize what you're doing at the time. But then when he puts it all together in that moment and shows you, Oh yeah, now I can just, I've gone from the couch to being able to wrestle a 60 minute match on the fly then you realize, oh my God, right? So, um, right. but he could see all that stuff way before I could. So one day he calls me over to the desk. This is in, well, it has to be 2007 at this point. So okay. 2005 is when I packed up and moved and being there for, well, we'll for the sake of brevity, we'll just say I'm there from two, 2005 to 2007. So we're looking at ruthless aggression aggression era, I believe. Like John Cena was just coming yeah, in. Yeah, or yeah, just you know, he I mean he'd been he this is John Cena the champ is here era. The spinner spinner okay, okay, spinner you. belt era, John Cena, he's just one, you know. Uh so yeah, and now and now two thousand seven yeah. is you know, basically seen as the WWE champion, you know, whatever. Okay. So gotcha. anyway, Rip 
calls me over to the desk and he says, vet. I say, yeah. He says, can you be a Druid at WrestleMania? And I said, Rip, I can be the best Druid there's ever been. Goddamn right. <laughs> and that it was as simple as that how I found out. Like that now, going from trying, you know, to buy a ticket, yeah, like a mark, and then going to be a participant in that span of time. I guess the lesson. Um, that I took from that is that you like, whatever you think you can do, you can do that. Like you really can like really the limitations are many times in your mind. Um, there are certainly times that things are going to be harder to accomplish, but if you just not, you know, sometimes you can, Sometimes you can shoot for the moon and land on a cloud, but sometimes you can shoot for a cloud and land on the moon too. If you, you, all that corny stuff that people say about believing in themselves and you can do anything you put your mind to. And like all these inspirational quotes that you just kind of, you kind of roll your eyes at them because they're cliches, but it's like, but then when you've actually done it, then it makes you want to let other people know that too. Like whatever it is that you think you're thinking about doing, you can do that if you get out of your own way and put the work in. So that's kind of, that was kind of an eye opening experience for me, but that was just, that's even just finding out that I'm going to go. And then now is that, uh, is that Detroit? Yes, this is Detroit. So Ford field, um, huge, right? Like place is fucking it's massive. massive. Um, yeah. Yeah, I didn't I didn't see hardly any of that building really. And it I still felt like I was right. in the biggest place I'd ever been in. <laughs> Which is yeah. funny. Um so because when I walk in like the uh whatever whatever entrance we we went into, um there was a well, I mean there's a whole there's a whole road trip too. Like we're going from Louisville, right? All the we're driving to Detroit. We stop over in Dayton at a day's in in Ohio, right. To sleep. And then we finish the rest of the, the drive in the morning. Right. How many people did you have to room with in, in Dayton? I think there was three. So what, what ended up happening was uh, I'll tell you the road trip. I'm fascinated well, by all this. Like I literally want yeah, to know every, okay. Every detail, so, so that, that's what I wanted to know if you want to know. So let's, let's go. So the road trip. So, the guys that were all told, like a group of us were, you know, assigned and, uh, we, you know, we kind of figured out the logistics of, okay, who's going to ride with who, like how many, you know, how many cars are we going to take? So it's basically like, I want to say it was, mm, there was like two big groups of people and then maybe like a couple others that were going to do their own thing. Right. So like, for me, um, there was, I'm trying to remember who all was in my particular, but it was like, wasn't like, um, it couldn't have been a lot. It had to have been five people in like a pickup truck. Right. And it was, uh, it was this guy, low rider is what we called him there. Uh, he went on to be Anarchia in TNA for a while. Yep. Yep. I know mm-hmm. who that is. And, um, so I think he was, he was driving as his truck. So I went to his, I went to his place um, beforehand because he lived down the street from me. And so we all met up kind of there. Then we went to OVW in the Davis Arena in the parking lot and met up there. And then we all had our plans, right? So here's the funny part. We all had our our thing set up, right? Okay. Pat Buck shows up, right? Some of you people may know Pat Buck. (laughs) Uh, He shows up. No plan. He's just like trying to get a ride with somebody now we've already like he's like fuck it i'm yeah i'm going i don't give a fuck what you like or not. yeah like, and we're all just yeah. like in, in our minds i guess I, I can't speak for everyone but i think in our minds we were all like well fuck you um because right. this is kind of the way he would act <laughs> like he just expects <laughs> stuff would just Shocker. happen right yeah. um right and uh so like we so in in low riders truck, it was like, we already had like five people. Like it was it's two guys were going to ride up front and three people were going to ride in that small ass backseat. Right. 
<laughs> I can't imagine what that looks like, by the way. <laughs> Not great, but nonetheless, it's like, I guess we decided, you know, that he could ride with us, but he had to get in the flatbed, right? Nice. <laughs> with the, uh, that's what I was going to ask. Like, yeah, get in the back. The, yeah. Luckily, that's we had awesome. the camper cover on it because it's a lot of okay, freeway so driving. Open. Okay. Yeah. And Pat Buck just <laughs> from Louisville to Dayton, Ohio, just sat in the back of this pickup truck just all by himself, just so he could go. And then when we, I'm sure. I'm sure he's never told that story. I, I guarantee he's probably never, never said that. It's publicly. an exclusive right here, Rad Mania, brother. Um, this is a true story. <laughs> uh, he could deny it if he wants to, but it happened. Um, so that was that. And then when we got out at the, uh, you know, at the hotel, <laughs> the motel, whatever, whatever you want, the days in. Um, yeah. yeah, he like switched to another ride. I guess he, you know, worked it out with somebody else. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, that, that was like, so that was a funny story. And then clearly he's an opportunist. Like, I mean, he, he fumbled his way on the TV at some point, like on WWE TV, like, you know, as a character, I, so, I mean, you got to give him credit. Can't for, knock for the that. hustle. Um, right. Exactly. I can right. only, I can only knock how annoyed his behavior always made me. <laughs> so, <laughs> <That's fair. laughs> so, um, so anyway, and then at the at the hotel at the Days Inn, I guess, um, there were some rats. I guess we'll say there, mm -hmm. and uh, let's just say like even uh, like however many people were in my room, I can't remember because <laughs> technically my roommates weren't in the room. I went to the room and went to sleep. They told me that. There's some marks down there. They're going to buy us some, some to eat and uh, whatever. And uh, I'm just like, you guys go ahead. <laughs> so I went, <laughs> I just tried to sleep the best I can, as much as you can, when you know you have like one of the biggest days of your life in the morning. And then uh, I guess some. Remember how you mentioned earlier about being the most oh, unique so person. unique. Uh, well, I yeah. can only imagine uh, an Ohio just, rat. Like, first of all, uh, I mean, second of all, I'm not going to take the I, chance I clap. i'm not gonna take the chance of seeing any of these other guys <laughs> doing anything either like fair, and it's plausible fair. deniability that's another thing true i don't know that's what true. happened that's i can only assume what may or may not have happened um and you know i won't say any names either so it I i'm just shocked you didn't want to partake in your first you know groupie experience like you're you've you've made it when you have uh you know rats Showing up for for you know students. <laughs> well, they didn't. They were <laughs> our w. rats. They were wrestling rats. But that's the thing. Like they were. They were probably. They were on their way to WrestleMania as well. Coincidentally, I guess. I mean, as far as I know. Now, did somebody arrange this at some point? I don't know that either. I don't know. Have no idea. Well, that's what I'm wondering. Like, how did how did they know y'all were wrestlers? I mean, did you? I, I assume mean, because did you, did you look the part? Maybe. I assume what happened was once we got there and everything, I went to the room, right? And they went to the bar or the <laughs> restaurant or whatever. Okay. And I guess that's where they met up and they started talking to, you know, whatever. I don't know how it exactly nice. happened because I wasn't there. But but the, <laughs> what I right. gathered was that, like, I guess there were some fans that had stopped over on the way and, um, you know, they met down there and one thing led to another and perhaps action action Alleg uh, allegedly, allegedly alleged uh, action so well i mean you didn't get any stories from from any of the guys you went I didn't with ask that's fair okay that's i mean some things are better left uh better left unknown yeah I, guess, so. I, I can't impress upon you and your audience enough how much i do not care what happened that night <laughs> But I am just telling you the story because you wanted the details and and I'm trying to Everyone. You know, make yeah. it colorful. But personally, then as now, I had no interest in what the guys were doing, weren't doing, what the rats looked like. I never saw any of them. I don't know what, you know, were they worth it? I don't know. I'm sure they were Ohio's finest. Finest, right? Or maybe they were, you know, maybe they were from the UK. Maybe uh, they had bought tickets and... Uh, <laughs> You never know. So we might have some, you know, 
Hey, it's it, your either story. Way, you can paint either way, Ohio, United Kingdom, probably questionable dental hygiene, <laughs> no matter what. No matter how you slice it. Sorry, uh, sorry to the residents of Ohio, especially. Hey, Dan. if the shoe fits. Uh, the, the... I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of so. sparkly smiles, you know, listening right now, too. So no problem. <laughs> so the next, the next day. day yeah. So we so bright and early finish our road trip. We pull up. We got our own little uh, whatever, whatever parking area we're supposed to park in. Right. We go in there. We're all dressed in our business casual, you know, the little, you know, um, did, did Rip implore that obviously you had to, you know, look and, and, and be professional? Did he, did he even talk about that or did you just kind of assume that's what you had to do? I believe, uh, I believe there was a, cause this was through Mike Bucci, Nova. So yep. he, he like, I guess he probably passed down like a, a dress code, you know, the conduct, whatever, whatever it was. So we knew we had to dress nice and whatever. I was just curious because obviously you're, you're with some questionable people to begin with. So I just wanted to know if, uh, if that was something that was impressed upon you guys before we you knew, got there. We knew what, what the deal was. Um, so we, we, we were nice, you know, like slacks, dress shirt, tie, didn't have a suit coat or anything stupid like that, but we're extras. So it's like, <laughs> right. whatever, yeah. we're going to wear a cloak today. It's not too serious, but some people were also used for the, uh, M and M paparazzi stuff. So mm -hmm. like, you know, you had to, you had to look a certain way for that too. But after a while, you know, like after being there for a few hours, like I took the tie off. It does. It wasn't, you know, wasn't that big of a deal. Um, nobody cared. Um, so as we're coming in, um, like the first thing I see that, and this is funny because of it, it, your comment about Ford field, the size of it, so the first thing I see when we're walking in with our rolling cases and stuff, and uh, I see John Cena and the great Kali are like walking up, like passing us, like we're passing each other. Uh, so yeah. a line of us and then John Cena and, and great Kali walking and John Cena looks up at great Kali and he's like, it's a pretty big place. And I just thought that's like a, that's like a Hallmark card. You know, like a, a giant, <laughs> giant man, little John Cena, uh, him, him ironically saying that the place is big to a much bigger man. Like, it's just very, right. I thought that was very That's cute. It's a very postcard moment. Um, for sure. And then, um, and then punk comes up the ramp and he's just like, he's high-fiving all of us in a line. Like he's jazz. This is his first like mania that he gets to ha have a match on. Um, yep. All around Louisville, whether it was at OVW or the Gold's Gym on Preston or whatever, I see Cody Rhodes all the time. And we, we would always like, hey, how's it going? You know, shake hands, whatever. Just he'd always see me say hi, you know, very nice and everything. I ran into him at, the, at, that, at, at that mania and shook his hand. And this time his face was like a quizzical, like, Look, like almost, what are you doing here? Right, right. <laughs> and I was just like, man, what? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you know, like I just, but whatever, that's, that's Cody. So, um, what do you want to talk about? And I, I had one, I had one interaction with him, which was actually kind of cool. Um, I met him in Spartanburg, South Carolina for, uh, big time wrestling. It was right after he left WWE as Stardust and was doing his own thing and like literally like, making his name on the indies like he was the guy uh on mm -hmm. the indies at that part uh, at that point and he was uh doing the meet and greets uh in the big lo you know, lobby area they had and he was just about to wrap up and i'm like oh fuck i like i really want to meet this dude and um i went to him and said hey do you mind if i can get a picture with you you know and he's like i'm about to go to the ring but yeah sure i got you know i got time and and you know he gave me his money and he took the picture with me and uh and i'm like I know you hated Stardust, but I, I really thought it was, you know, entertaining. I said, I, I hope you bounce back at some point. I mean, he was very nice, very gracious, uh, very down to earth. Uh, so that was my and one. You had to need Cody a little about Stardust. Great, great job. Of course, me. I did. I'm sure he wasn't. <laughs> I'm sure he wasn't happy. I did. I really did Could enjoy have said the character. Anything like, else? Well, he took chicken shit and made chicken salad out of it. Like it's. I thought he did the best he possibly could do with that character, given what what they had for him. So, I mean, you got to give him credit for 
making the most out of it that he could. Obviously, he, you know, years later, we know how much he really did fucking yeah. hate it. Um, but he was a cool dude. What, was, whatever happened to Cody Rhodes? I never, I kind of lost track of you know, him. You know, got potential. I mean, he's he's still kicking around. Well, it's never too late to put that paint back on, you know. I, I wish he would, just, just for just old times' sake. Maybe when he retires, like Sting did. Well, and I believe if you've got the, uh, you know, two K twenty four, you can definitely download a version of, which I do actually. I bought the uh, the deluxe version, and that's that is included. There you go. All right, so moving on. Um, so here I am. Yeah, here sorry. I am at the building now. Uh, I'm kind of like, okay, now what? Uh, it's like many hours until showtime proper. So it's, you know, there's really not much for you to do other than get out of everybody's way because you can't be a fan, right? Like you can't ask Cody Rhodes for a picture here because you're representing, you know, everything that you do goes back on OBW, Danny Davis, all that stuff, right? And and Bucci, right? Yeah. And you can't be a professional because these guys will just not look at you as on their level, right? Right. So you're just in a weird sort of limbo, like a no man's land. So you just kind of float around and try not to bother anybody. And the approach I always took, you know, they, they tell guys, you know, like, especially around that time, it's like, well, you got to shake everybody's hand because with no exceptions, because you'll get heat or whatever. And I never really followed right. that. Cause that's bullshit. Anyway. Number one, number two, of course. um, It would just be, I would just save it for those situations where it's like either if I have something to say to somebody, or if you're in that position where you're just so uncomfortably close to somebody that you can't not acknowledge them, you have to just sort (laughs) of say hi, you know, whatever. Well, I mean, you're an extra. It's not like you're enhancement talent and you're working a match with somebody and, you know, like, like Jeff Hardy at 14 years old or 15, wherever he was and getting his ass beat by Scott Hall. I mean, like, you know, that's there's a big difference between that and, and you know, being an extra or being a druid. So it's not like you're going to go into Undertaker or Batista and be like, hey, man, I'm one of the druids today. What's up? Like, <laughs> clearly, right. that's right. It, it, it doesn't really work that way. So, uh, but on that note, so we were like, we had guys, all the guys from OVW, there was probably some people from Deep South that came up. I'm not sure. But then there was like maybe a few locals that may have been from like a certain promotion around the area. I wasn't sure about that, but I didn't recognize any of the people. However, Mm -hmm. there's this, there was a guy and you would like, so you would hear, and you've probably heard this many times of where, again, as a wrestler, they tell you, Hey, you got to bring your gear to every show because you never know what's going to happen. Right. And they would encourage guys that would be extras on like raw and SmackDown, like, dress in your dress in your workout gear and then hope that get around the ring and hope that you can like get a workout in front of, you know, the agents, whatever. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe not this day (laughs) because there was a fucking guy that I saw him earlier. And then I like, I saw him, he was wearing like nice clothes earlier. And then later I saw him walking around with like the tank top, the sweat shorts, the wrestling boots and i'm just like brother i think with the amount of people that have been left off the card today if somebody goes down you might not get pulled up i I don't think this is your this is your night to shine right like this would be the one time you don't have to worry about that rule um but i thought that was very always one guy yeah there's always there always has to be that one guy that one guy hey he did Anybody we know? No, 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 no. Like I said, I'd never seen him before. Um, I would not protect his innocence if I knew who this was. (laughs) Clearly, (laughs) he never made it. Um, But because if you're that level of clueless, I'm sure there are many other gaffes that he made, faux pas and other things that probably prevented him from being a superstar. That and the fact that, you know, he looked like, you know, AEW would probably tell him, you're a little too small and a little too thin. So... That and that says quite quite a bit. So yeah, so it's, it's not like he's hanging out with in catering and just sits down with with John Cena. No, that's lunch. me. I'm doing that. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, so did you actually get to go to catering? Well, yeah, the whole thing was catering. Like the whole area was like catering. It was all the seats. Okay. Um, where they had like, I guess the monitors. They had monitors for things that were going on. Uh, for the pre tapes, they had to work on. 
like throughout the day, that thing that remember the thing that John Cena did where he like drove the Dodge Viper. It looked like, yeah. yeah. So they had shot part of that earlier, obviously. And then they were like, I saw that up on the monitors. Like they were rewinding it. Like, I guess they were trying to like time it out, you know, whatever, look mm-hmm. at the footage and stuff like that. That was playing on a lot of the stuff um, before the show started. And uh, so this big open area, everybody's kind of mingling the foods off to one side. Um, food was bad, by the way. Uh, I was going to ask because, you know, I'm fat yeah. and I'm a foodie. So, I mean, I, I am curious to see what they had for absolute for C minus food at this show for WrestleMania. For WrestleMania. Really? That's, that's, I hear I, that the TV spreads were much better. That's yeah. I bad. don't know what it was. I don't know if it's Detroit. I mean, you're paying for the pyro. You're, you're <laughs> Right, you're paying for John Cena's fucking intro. You're paying for the fireworks and the pyro. Yeah, yeah, I mean, but John sure. Cena wants to eat sure something to too. So, like, you know, you gotta, <laughs> you kind of want to, because that's the thing. It's not like it's not like there was our catering and then superstar catering. Like when I get a plate, <laughs> Booker T's standing right in front of me. So it's like I feel bad that he has to eat this, right? Um, I, I was gonna ask you, was he serving or, or, or was he actually partaking? You said in front of you, so I just wanted. to paint a picture Bro, I'm tell sorry, me horrible. you didn't just say that yeah so. uh so that's the thing though like it would be a lot of walking around and seeing people you know just you know saw you know like uh you, you'd see a booker t and catering you'd see um you'd see a gene snisky sitting on a box somewhere um you'd see uh you know i, I saw there was Pretty much everybody, like I, I saw Jeff Hardy in the bathroom, like, you know, I had to, I had to use the restroom and I go in there and Jeff Hardy's like right in there. And I'm just like, you know, it's one, again, one of those awkward situations where you can't say nothing. Not like I went to a right. urinal next to him, but it was like, he's by the sink looking in the mirror as I'm walking in the room, you know? So I was like, Hey man, he's like, Hey man. And that's it. Um, just, uh, stuff like that. I turn around a corner like I, I'm, I'm turning a corner and all of a sudden uh, I see Slick and Jimmy Hart. They're just there. Just like they both like I, I was immediately assaulted with all their gimmick. Like Jimmy Hart was like, hey, what's going on, baby? Like he's just shaking my hand and stuff. And then and, and Slick, same thing. Like, you know, Teddy Long gives me the, you know, the, you know, the, the brother right. handshake. Just like so, so many people just you some you interact with some you just don't. It, you kind of feel it out, I guess. See, now I would mark out for them, literally, like the managers, like the old school 80s, uh, you know, 90s managers. That's yeah, it's that's me. I, well, I was, but you just can't. There's nothing you can do. You can't you show know, it. You just, yeah. That's such an awkward position because, like, at this point, you're training. So, I mean, you're one of the boys, right. um, even though you're not on that level yet. And obviously, you were, you were good enough or at least liked enough to be put in this position to be an extra. But then again, as a fan, like, you're like, holy fuck. Like, I grew up watching these guys. Or here's the world champion, fucking John Cena. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, I'm going to be involved with Undertaker. So it's like, a- a- as a fan, it does kind of suck that you didn't get to have any special moments. Or, you know, but uh, so yeah, again, that, that has to be an awkward situation of walking the line. It's I very guess. awkward. And even though I, I'm not the kind of guy who, like, and, and this is this is not this is not like a shot at anybody. It's just a statement of fact. Like I'm not a picture guy. I'm not an autograph guy. I couldn't care less about those type of things. Um, I I don't mark out like that for anyone really. Um, Mm -hmm. there's people that I would have wanted to talk to, which I'll get to, but, but like in general, just like, I don't get starstruck by, those kind of people. It's just more of like I had an opportunity of like, oh, I would like to tell so and so something, or something like that. And this is the this is a chance. Right. But I'm not like, uh, you know, oh, Ric Flair, please put down that coffee and take a picture with me. Like I, I'm not, you know, which Ric Flair was walking around with a coffee and no pants on, which I'm sure <laughs> has been many times in his life. But at least it was his, it was his gear. It was his gear. He just had his gear and his t-shirt on. So it wasn't, you know, anything out of the ordinary this day. He wasn't wrestling on the card. He just wanted to walk around. I forget what he did, but I, I I get what you mean though. Like just from a fan standpoint, I've been one of those guys too, where like, 
I respect the business. I, I grew up watching these guys on TV. A lot of guys, you know, like my my parents were divorced when I was a teenager. All I had was wrestling. Like I watch wrestling. Uh, they're in my living room every single week. You know, they kind of feel like family after a while. Like so, like when you lose somebody, it, it right. honestly feels like, oh man, that fucking sucks. Right. But I've never been to the point where like, holy shit, that's Chris Jericho or fucking whoever. Like, I know the regular people. They may be stars, but I can relate to them on, on a different level. Um, so whenever I would meet somebody or interview somebody like you or no matter what level you're on, you know, people have had on the show, I, I try to relate to them. I'm not just a fucking dipshit wrestling fan, you know, typical Mark that you guys probably get shit from all the time. Unless it's um, Stardust, I have then a, which case you can just... Everything's out the window then, but for Chris Jericho, <laughs> That's fair. nah, you're just the Fozzie's lead singer. That's all. But I do like to get pictures just to kind of just capture that moment. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I, but I'm like you, I would rather have a conversation with them and, and say, thank you for all the years of entertaining me or, you know, you got me through some hard times, all that bullshit or like just getting an understanding of who, who they really are. So I, I get your point of like, Hey, I'd like to actually sit down with, with Jimmy Hart, you know, out of character and, you know, talk to him for a while. But apparently that was frowned upon. In reality, there were very few people that I would have had much to say to. I, I just right. like, that's the other reason that like, even if I was the kind of person to uh, be starstruck, I would not like, I would just say the same things that anybody else. Oh my God, I'm your biggest fan, whatever. Like, I don't have anything substantial right. to say to any of these people. And if I did, then I would. So that, that would be, yeah. so let's, let, so let's talk about the two people I saw that I would have and did not for different reasons, uh, get to interact with. I did interact okay. with a few people and, uh, we'll get to them too, I guess. Um, the first and this was a, this was, this one hurt. Um, the alpha male Monty Brown was there and I've always loved that guy. And yeah. I just wanted to just, I didn't want to do anything specifically other than just, just say, Oh yeah. Hey man, love what you're doing. Keep it up. That's it. I didn't see him all day. Uh, but when I did see him, the show was already going on. And he, I believe he worked on the show. He was on the show. It was like the ECW new blood versus originals match, like an eight man tag or something. Yeah. So I couldn't remember if this was before that or after that. I want to say it was before. Cause he looked like he was ready for something. Um, mm -hmm. but it's in catering and there's this big room and they had all the folding chairs set up. So if you wanted to just watch the show as it was going on, you could sit there and do that. So I'm sitting there watching the show. I look across the room and I see him, right? And I'm like, here's the chance. This is the first time I've seen him all day. However, everybody in this room is like sitting down watching the show, which means right. if I were to make a move, I would have to stand up in front of everybody, cross everybody who's sitting down and go and <laughs> talk to him who's also sitting down yeah you can't do that <laughs> there's no fucking way yeah. you it, it'd be like it'd be like in, in a in a movie theater right like people <laughs> people do have to get up and leave their seat it'd be just like that except this isn't dark it's not like everybody knows exactly what you're doing they know you're not going out of the room you're going and they're watching you get up and walk in front of them to go sit or you know stand next to another wrestler and talk to them and he would have seen yeah. it too so it's just like, it, it was just the most, there's no way. There's absolutely no way. And then I never saw him again after that. So that sucked. That, that sucked too. The other person that I would have wanted to, you know, say hi to is uh, Mick Foley. And Mick Foley was actually, he was making his way around. He like would talk to anybody, basically. He just sat down and started talking to people like, Oh, so, uh, what do you, you know, like whatever. And, and I was like, Oh, this will be no problem. Right. So there was, he was, he was sitting talking to somebody like a few chairs away. And, um, then like he stopped talking to them and then someone else started talking to me, like one of the other guys that, you know, the OVW guys or whatever. 
And then I, and then I like, he asked a question and I talked to him for a second. And then I looked back and Mick was already getting up and leaving. So it was just like, <sighs> ah, whatever. So close. I, did you ever ever have you have you ever had a chance to speak with him? Yeah, I got I got a chance to you know tell him whatever I wanted to tell him, but um, that was like years later. So, like he is a super nice guy. Like I saw him after one of his one man shows in Nashville. Uh, he was signing autographs, and he like literally was so like super down to earth. I don't agree with some of his politics, but I mean, as a person, as one of the guys, he was he was really gracious. Um, except he, one thing he told me was like. If I don't look into the camera, like don't you know, don't get weirded out, like flashes and stuff, like mess with my brain or whatever. <laughs> and he, uh, and I don't know if it. He gave me the you know the wrestling handshake, the fucking weak, mm. you know, fucking. Uh, I don't know if that was just something he was used to or his fucking hands hurt. I don't know. It was just I got the 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 weak handshake ah. too. So maybe that was just ingrained in him. But uh, other than that, like he was super super yeah, nice, good guy. Kind of, Kind of shy though. Like, it's funny. In a lot, I've noticed that with, with a lot of wrestlers. Like, when the lights on, he's fucking go go go. Like, he's literally, you know, the hardcore fucking legend. But like after the fact, when it's just around regular people, he was he was kind of I don't want to say standoffish, but I mean he was just like the switch was off. Like, yes. And I don't know if you, if you've encountered that obviously with with other um, guys. And not as much, but it's just that you have to think when you're trying to be in a, when you're trying to be in a pseudo sport where everybody's propping you up, like you're something and you know, you're not, so you know, you're a fraud. There has to be a level of insecurity to go along with that. And those Mm -hmm. levels obviously vary from person to person. So that can be interpreted as shyness, but ultimately I think it's all that like, you know you're living a lie. I mean, to be a pro wrestler is to live a lie. How well sure. you can reconcile that it determines your level of mental health. But ultimately, that's one of the many reasons why it just didn't work for me. Yeah, no, I agree. And I don't mean to cut off our story because there's so many different branches we can go off of this. I do want to finish your story. I didn't think it would take 50 minutes to get through the story, but I'm fa- I, I literally am fascinated by it. Um, but along that same lines of, you know, I would say like, never meet your heroes. Right. Cause like you may be disappointed. I was like that when I met Shawn Michaels <clears throat> right after he won the title from Brett, uh, WrestleMania 12, he did an appearance in Hartford for the arena football team they had at the time. I don't even remember the, the team. They only lasted a couple of years, but he was my guy. Like literally since 87 or 88, like when I saw him in AWA and then WWF, he was he was my favorite, and he always was, always has been. Um, but he was a dick during that time. Like he was, you know, ninety six. He wasn't the nicest person in the world. Um, so I stop off uh, at a gas station before I, I went there and got a WWF magazine of him on the cover, winning the title, uh, so I can have him autograph it. And when I, I I got to meet him, I'm like, oh man, like I'm super happy to meet you. You know, you've been my favorite for a long time. Uh, I'm so glad like you finally won. He's like, yeah, me too. And that was literally the only interaction I ever had with him. Like he signed it and that was it. And I was like, wow, that was kind of, kind of a dick move. I'm like, that's, you know, this is pre-internet. So, um, I wasn't, wasn't happy about that, but there's been other guys that I've met that have been fantastic. Like Hacksaw Jim Duggins, one of the nicest dudes in the world. Um, the nasty boys were in character when I met them, uh, in, I think it was 1991. Um, we were at uh, a place called Papa Gino's uh, across from Bradley Airport in uh, in Connecticut, and Knobs they had a mic there to like announce your orders when they're ready. He walks in, grabs the mic, and says, "Hey, nasty boys are in the house!" And he's just being like, you know, total kayfabe, like he's just being uh, you know wild and crazy. Uh, but then you had guys like Taker, who was also there, and he was just new to the company, and uh, none of my friends were had the balls to go up and talk to him because. This is like super in the infancy of that Undertaker character. And we were scared of him. We were like 13, 14. Um, but I was the only one that had the guts to actually go up to him and ask him, uh, Mr. Undertaker, sir, can I have your autograph? And he was eating like a tuna sub or some <laughs> shit like that. And he, he Very puts the food man down. Like, he sat, right? Yes. Uh, he had his Ribera jacket, his steakhouse jacket on. So, I mean, you knew he was a big deal. Um, 
but he put his food down and sat there and took my paper and signed it and gave it back to him. I said, thank you very much. And he, he just grunted at me. But I mean, like, he didn't have to do that, right? right? Like, back then, kayfabe was, was still pretty much alive. And this guy is a, a monster heel just in the company for like six months. And here's this little Mark mm-hmm. kid, teenager, you know, trying to get his autograph. He didn't have to fucking do anything. But, well, he also you know, didn't have to show up in public, cool. eat a tuna sub, too. So <laughs> hanging out with, with Brian and Jerry. Right. Yeah. yeah. So exactly. that, that's not exactly the company you would picture that character to keep. Right. <laughs> um, right. Um, but Jimmy, actually, just to finish the story, Jimmy Hart was there as well. And he literally did the same thing you said, like, oh, hey, daddy, what's going on, little man? How's it going? And to me, like, he was huge. Like, I yeah. see him on TV and I'm like, he's dwarfed by everybody. But I'm like, I don't know, five, eight at that point. And he was like six, one or two. And I'm like, holy shit, Jimmy Hart's fucking, he's a pretty big dude. And, and Hacksaw had the huge fucking barrel yeah. chest. And I'm like, this guy's a massive human being. Um, but there are guys that are, are cool to meet. And there's guys that are super dicks to meet. So anyway, I don't know how we well, got off on that. because you wanted to. But uh, so, but it, it, I, I I'm, it's my show. I'm I glad wanna, you did because, you know, all the interactions I had, there was two times all day where I was walking down like one of these big, like the huge ass tunnels. Right. Yeah. And like, there's nobody else in this tunnel except for me and one other person. Right. This happened twice. And I would walk down the tunnel, plenty of room, walk down the tunnel, the other person walking up the tunnel past me. And both times, each one of these individuals completely avoided eye contact. Like it's, it's impossible not to notice two <laughs> another person walking in the only giant tunnel that you're in, right? Like you would have seen them right. from a hundred yards away and you have to walk a hundred yards up to them where they're at and you meet in the middle and you pass. And the whole time you just don't look at them on purpose. Two guys that did that. Okay. You could probably guess who the first one is. Because you told a story about how he was a dick. Shawn Michaels. Right. You know who the other guy was? And this surprised Dude. me a little bit. It Batista? No. I met okay. Batista. He was at ringside, just hanging out. Very gracious. Very nice. Didn't talk for long. Just shook his hand. Didn't give yeah. me the worker handshake. Gave me a real man's handshake. And I was part of, I, I think I probably told him like, I'll be a Druid tonight or something like that. Just, just to let him know who, you know, like, why is this person at ringside talking to you? Um, right. And what, what was going on at that time was uh, like, I think they had a money in the bank match that night. And I think Mr. Kennedy had Hornswoggle up on his shoulders and was seeing like, yeah. what are the logistics of me doing a Green Bay plunge off the ladder with this guy? Like they were working out. <laughs> can I do it? Can I balance him? Like they didn't take the bump, of course, but there right. was he was that's what they were working on. Batista was there, said hi to him. Um, no, the other guy was Edge. Really? Who you hear is a nice guy. I've met him before. He was pretty nice. Of course, I was paying him money. Too nice, I mean, too, yeah. too, too nice, uh, not nice enough to just acknowledge a human being in his presence. Well, Sean at that point was obviously, you know, a born again Christian. So I am yeah. kind of like, hey, that's, that's and he's weird, and but. he's the, you know, he's in the main event. So like he's got things right. on his yeah. mind and it's not which, which I get. Yeah, but I true. didn't go up to him. That's the thing. It's one thing to yeah. like, you know, you not not comparing it, but like you approached him or whatever. And he could have been nicer to you because you're a fan. You approached him or whatever. I just walked past him. You didn't even get like the flit of eyes and- to like. Or the head nod, or something like, "Hey, nod." I was gonna say at least the, a nod. Like, what yeah. the fuck is what I, is what I was thinking? Like, because you have right. to go out of your way to ignore somebody. It's too the situation is too crazy for you to just ignore somebody. It's like no one's asking you to stop and stop everything you're doing and talk to a stranger. It's just like you see a person, head nod, whatever. That's, That's it. it. That's all. You so do. anyway, yeah. that happened. Um, back to ringside. Um, okay. so I'm, you know, I'm kind of sitting around, they're working out stuff like MVP, like had the thing that year where like all the cheerleaders ran down and like flanked both sides of the, the entrance ramp and everything. Yep. So they kept like yep. running back, running down. They were timing it out. Like they were timing entrances. 
Um, and uh, speaking of The Undertaker, like no better way to lose Mystique than to see the entrance done in uh, basketball shorts and a tank top and a hat. <laughs> the full slow entrance, but just no gear, no no effects. Right, right. Just <laughs> figuring out how long it's going to take to walk down there, right? The four-year-old wrestling fan and you died. So it's amazing. Right it was amazing. I loved it. Uh, yeah. Just just that kind of stuff. Um, but I mean, that's cool to see. Like, yeah, yeah. Again, going back to the fact that you are one of the boys, but you're still a fan on the inside. You know, it's mm -hmm. that's pretty cool that you had the unique opportunity to witness stuff like that. that no, no other fan, um, you know, could could see. No, so that no had to other be at least fan. And even cool. the other guys, like yeah. the other guys that came up with me, they're not. They didn't have the same exact experience as I had, and I'm sure they right. got into some stuff that I didn't see too. Like, and I'm not talking about the Dayton hotel room i just mean at i mean they could have been worn out yeah, from the alleged activities yeah, at, the night before. at mania they could have had interactions and fun stories and stuff like so maybe they got to talk to they Mick probably Foley. all talked to mick Foley, but i also saw man. todd grisham and i was like i want to give todd grisham a hug but that's definitely inappropriate <laughs> like he needed a hug at that point in time you know he was going yeah. through some shit um yeah. so so that th there was that um but back at ringside yeah like I met, I shook hands with, okay, talk about a trilogy of guys. They're all standing there talking. And it's one of those moments, again, they're talking to each other. And I just sort of realized, hey, wait a minute, I'm in the vicinity of these guys. It's too awkward if I don't <laughs> shake hands with right. them, right? Okay. William Regal, Fit Finley, Dave Taylor. You ever hear people talk about like auras? Like when yeah. <laughs> this is how, like when I shook those guys hands, they were perfectly nice. They, they, they were, yeah. they, they, they didn't really smile. If anything, they smirked, but nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice. You know, whatever. Just three classy gentlemen standing around having a chat. Sure. And three legit tough motherfuckers too. I'm not kidding you, Rob. I felt like what a gazelle must feel like if they walk past a lion that's already eaten. <laughs> right. Like I, I was just, I've never felt toughness coming off of people like I had in that moment. And they were just so like, they were so nice, but I could feel it. It was there. Like it was yeah. a real thing. Yeah. So that was crazy. I survived that. Um, what are some other fun things? Um, actually Matt Stryker, uh, I was, I was talking to, or I was sitting there and Matt was talking to somebody else from New York that he knew. Um, mm -hmm. so they were like catching up and I was just sitting there and Matt Stryker interrupted himself to say, hi, I'm Matt. Nice to meet you and shake my hand and then go back oh. to his conversation. Cause he, again, you know, he saw the, uh, the complete opposite of an edge or a Shawn Michaels noticed that there's right. a person sitting there realized, Hey, the wrestler thing to do is I should introduce myself and be polite or whatever. And that's what he, he went out of his way to be polite. So guys like that, you know, they'll always be kind of over with me for, for just, just for being a nice, a nice person. It shouldn't be that hard. And, and for, and for him, obviously, you know, his background, like he was a super fan, right? I mean, he was a teacher. He was a super wrestling fan. He was fortunate enough to get into the business. So I, I think he kind of knew what position you were in, or at least knew like, all right, this guy's obviously here for a reason. Uh, I was in his spot at one time, or he's just a nice guy. It could be, or a combination both, of both. Yeah, I would think. Um, but that's cool, though. That's cool that he did that. That was cool. Um, let's see what else was pretty cool. Um, trying to think. There are so many things I'm probably going to forget. But uh, so I still love the scene on Kali moment. That's, like, that's awesome, right? <laughs> literally, that should it be should a teacher. Have been. It yeah. should have been. Uh, so, so that happened. There was, uh, okay, so well, obviously Donald Trump is there, right? Oh, that's right. Battle of the Billionaires. Yep. That was a big fucking event. That really was. I, I forget how big that event was. Big event. Um, I believe it's, it may be the highest grossing WrestleMania, maybe in terms of buys. I, I'm not sure. At least that I was true at one point. At that point. Uh, it may have yes. since been surpassed by something, but for that. Uh, well, depends who you ask. I mean, if you ask Meltzer. Yeah, who knows? Know, obviously. Who it knows? But, um, but, oh, but speaking of which, sorry. Um, it's listed as 74,000 people. Obviously, you're not going to count every fucking seat, but I mean, did it feel like seven, like a legit, you know, ginormous fucking 70,000 fan, or do you think it was inflated? It's impossible to tell, uh, but I'll get to that. That'll be sort of the main okay. event, I guess. Um, gotcha. So, 
So I see, so I see Donald, he's talking to Shane, like maybe 30 feet away from me. I can't, I don't really get any closer than that. Cause I didn't need to be, but this is right. now sort of at the point where I have to get ready to do, you know, my thing. Now I don't remember if it was, but we had a rehearsal as well. Um, because if you remember on that show, so for the undertaker's entrance there, the Druids come out and there's the stage has like, I guess like points on it. It kind of looks like a hand mm -hmm. like sticking out and, and people would file onto each of the, there'd be five or so guys on each of the points of the stage. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we like worked that out, but we, and we had like these torches we were supposed to carry. So we didn't light the torches during practice, but we, we, we worked on it a couple of times just to make sure we were able to, you know, get the, get everything coordinated and timed out. It was actually <laughs> for, for what it, for what it ended up being in retrospect, it kind of seemed hands off. Like they trusted us a little bit more. We didn't have to do this a bunch of times. It was maybe just a couple times they ran through. Right. So we wear these, we got these cloaks that we're wearing, you know, they're kind of sheer, they're thin. Um, and they want us to pull the hood down so that nobody's face can be seen. So just okay. like any sort of like, if you were to put like a, you know, like pantyhose or whatever on your head, like you can see through it, but it's not great. It's like just enough visibility that you can kind of make out shapes in front of you. Um, but that's what they wanted. So at one point during the rehearsal, Vince walks out and one of the guys, remember I told you about those marks that uh, one of them got in his workout clothes or whatever. Yes. One of the guys that was there, that, that, that part of that group um, didn't look like a wrestler. None of them really did, but he looked even less like a wrestler. He looked like he could have been like, I'm like, I, I'm, a, I'm a, I'm just training to be a referee or something or whatever. He seemed like kind of a nerdy guy. Um, right. but anyway, he was one of those guys and like Vince is just strutting around like on the stage, just looking. And then he just walks up to this guy and he's like, uh, it's like, uh, uh, how's the, uh, how's the visibility in the, in those things, you know, whatever he says, you know, like <laughs> talking about the, the hood and the guy's like, um, so, so, and, uh, Vince's reaction to this is he says, well, can we get somebody out here that can see a little bit better than so, so. <laughs> and I never saw that guy the rest of the day. Right. Um, <laughs> just lie about it. Just, right. Like well, fucking. You, yeah. You, you, what the fuck is he asking that question for? If he doesn't want an honest answer, why would he care about that? You know, of all the things that he could have asked or what he's doing, he's just, this is, <laughs> Just let, let's just leave it at believe everything you hear. Okay. Let's, 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 let's fair, not, fair let's not turn this into a whole fair other enough. thing, but that's my not personal that, firsthand experience. And you can extrapolate from that, whatever you wish. Um, fair enough. So, so that happened. We, we did the rehearsal. Everything's cool. Now it's getting to be showtime. Um, we're in the, the gorilla, I guess, if you want to call it that, uh, we're kind of standing there ready to file out. Undertaker comes through, fist bumps everybody individually. Boom, 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 boom. Comes down the line. He's getting hyped up. Nice. Batista's there, you know, getting hyped up, whatever. We go off to the side of the stage now. And so we're out there. Now, to your question about the people, like, this is... This like for anybody that I, I I don't know what it's I guess if you've been to big sporting events or whatever and you sat in the stands, you can kind of get it. It's like an unknowable yeah. amount of people. Like you just see a mass of people. I cannot I cannot yeah. hear anyone. I cannot see anyone. They are whatever. And on top of that, I got I can only see so so out of this hood. <laughs> That's um, true. <laughs> so. But the, the presence, though, was like, wow. Um, and then Batista's music hits. And I had like, you know, my tag team partner used to always love when Batista would come out on SmackDown or whatever. And he would always like get up and turn the volume up on the TV. Is like, come on, vet. Come on. Right. You know, like he, he, 
he'd he'd get extra hype about it and i was always like would you just sit down you know whatever <laughs> but when i heard it like that i got it so yeah. now you know i walk alone is a very awesome song and i totally understood why you got so hyped up in the living room all those times um right so yeah that was incredible and then it's our turn and we got to go out there now the torches are on fire so i can see so so and i have to make sure <laughs> that I am holding this torch at such a distance that I will not set the guy in front of me on fire. And I also have to blindly hope that the guy behind me is doing the same thing. Or set yourself on fire. I wasn't worried about that because I'm holding it <laughs> very far away from me, but not That's too far because it's got to yeah. be perfect. Um, so what you think, I mean, did they at least give you the unlit prop? During your rehearsal? yeah 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 we could we just that's what I was saying we judged the distance okay. um so we got to carry the torch but it wasn't lit at the time that that was when the obviously but it does make a difference yeah so when, when it's yeah on fire. so yeah it's on fire now anyway it all goes off without a hitch apparently um I've watched it back uh you know on the pay per view edit um but. It, uh, you know, then we get back off, we file back off the stage. This is all like the, you know, the, uh, Gregorian monk chanting part, you know, they haven't hit the gong right. yet. Um, and yeah. then, you know, so it's like, it's all that we've, we file back off the stage. There's these buckets of water off to the side and we dump the torch in there and then that's it. You're done for the night. And, um, we just watch the rest of the show from there. So, um, well, since we worked our way up to that for the last hour, I, I do want to at least show the fruits of your labor uh, and and show the video. I do have it queued up while you were telling your fascinating, amazing story. So uh, give me a second to figure out how to fucking share. There we go. Share the screen. Chrome tab. Peacock. There we go. Okay. There we go. Now, I'm excited. Now, do you remember which druid you were because you know i have to know which one you are i don't want to i mean i could guess but it'd, i don't it'd be nice if i you, don't think you can really see anything that i can point out i believe okay. if you're looking directly at the stage if i remember correctly if you're looking directly at the stage i'm like on the on the second sort of on the second sort of whatever you want to call it pier or arm or <laughs> out outcrop or <laughs> whatever, whatever it is. I like the second one from the right. And then like mm -hmm. the guy behind the guy in front. Okay. All right. Well, at least I have some kind of a, a focal point. here. So like this part here, I couldn't tell you which one I am because I don't know, you know, some of these angles, I don't even know wh where's my side. <laughs> but you see how they come to those points out there? Yes. The actual stage, the construction of it was really cool. It's fucking huge. Like, it's just... It, it's got to be like... It had to take you back at some point. Like, goddamn, like, this is like the biggest fucking event ever. Like, this is such okay, a pause it. magnanimous... Oh, sorry. Uh, oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, so again, like if you're looking at it from here, it's like uh I you know, so you got the guys all the way on the left of the screen there. And then yep. you got the next row over. Yeah. And then I think I'm the second guy from the front in that row. Second okay. or third. I'm either I'm either I'm somewhere in the two guys in the middle. I'm I'm not the front, I'm not the back, but I'm in the middle somewhere. So I forget whether I was second or third, but that's your, re where I was your recollection of of the events leading up to this have been fantastic. How the fuck can you not remember which position you came out in, which order you came? I mean, well, I did also say I left a lot out and forgot some stuff. But, <laughs> That's true. But I, I will just. But I mean, it, was, it was like a blur. Like it's like holy it shit. It kind right? of it kind of was Rob because it's funny because when I would think about it now and not only this, this day, but everything else around it, the two years that I spent leading up to this right. in training and the time I spent after this, at this point, it feels like it happened to somebody else. Yeah. So when I tell the stories, it almost feels like I'm just retelling a story that somebody told me. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. 
Well, I mean, it, it's still, it's a fucking spectacle to behold. I mean, I went to WrestleMania 14 in Boston, uh, which is the first time he ever had Druids, and he actually walked, you know, yeah. underneath him, that iconic shot. So, I mean, that was, like, a cool thing to see. But That like, was this, badass. Yeah, that really was badass. Um, and he had that uh, that weird, like, sort of cape thing like with the, the diamond, the, yeah. the, the diamond backing on the, yeah. That was a cool event, actually. Um, and, uh, you know, it's funny, just... Getting back to Shawn Michaels, I was in the nosebleeds. I couldn't tell how hurt he was. They didn't have it up on on any. They didn't have big screens back then. Um, but watching the pay per view back, I was like, "Holy fuck!" Like I can't believe he actually made it through that match. If he was that injured, like, you couldn't tell from the nosebleeds that he was having that much trouble. I mean, you could kind of see him strain, but you just think he's selling, right? Like, yeah. But uh, yeah, WrestleMania 14 was cool, uh, and then I went to WrestleMania 28, which sucked. What's yeah. the twenty? Well, the one in Atlanta. The worst match ever, Michael Cole and, and Jerry Lawler. Ugh. I can't get that back ever again. Well, let's, let's concentrate on this. So this was yeah, a cool spectacle, and you know it was it was neat to be a part of it. See, like one of those guys could be me. I can't tell. <laughs> I'm somewhere in this shot, probably. I don't know. <clears throat> Definitely in that shot. I mean, that's that's yeah. I'm, I'm in the shot where everybody's in it. That's that's right. me in there. That's me in there with everyone. So I like cool. this too. How they cut back to Batista, like sweating. Yeah. Um. This part was maybe a little overkill. <laughs> you think? I don't. I don't think he need this. The, the Undertaker doesn't need like the sparkly explosions, <laughs> a little fire crack. Like that's not really the gimmick. What's, right? What sucks is that you actually had to leave. Yeah. Sorry, I gotta go. Like it would be cool if if you were out there and felt like that entrance with the gong and watching him come down well, i mean i was right there i, I did feel Ish. it yeah um that's badass though i'm like you got to get from a production standpoint i mean there's none better and, and still to this day um yeah batista god he was fucking jacked that's a cool image right there yep just picture that basketball shorts and sneakers. And... <laughs> That's that is pretty cool, actually. Uh, no, but it, it's awesome, man. Just, just Undertaker's a guy, you know, like somehow remained scandal free his whole career, and was a guy that people always looked up to and in and out of the ring. So, being able to have that tiny, just tiny little part. You know, it was like that that's worth anything else that happened around it. Right. Just just I'm I feel like glad I could help you out is is basically the 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 feeling I have for that. Um did you ever get a chance since then at all to ever speak with him? No. 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 Unfortunately. But it would be a cool thing like if I ever for some reason ran into him, you'd be like, "Oh yeah, you know, at 23 I was a, you know, that that's a natural sort of icebreaker type thing, which sure, yeah. that's, those are the things that I don't have for most people. Like I don't care to talk to them or I have nothing to say yeah. to them. No offense to them. It's just the way it is. <laughs> right. But like, if you have something to say, that's a cool thing to say. Like if it ever came up, but not, not worried about it. I, I was, I'm just more like, Oh yeah. Yeah. All the stuff, especially when they were doing his whole, you know, legacy thing and, the 25 years of undertaker that they yeah. did whenever that yeah. was and all that stuff, just being able to be like, Oh, it was a teeny tiny part. It was a, just a little, little tiny part. That was nice. That is really cool. Though. I mean, no, it, it is. And that's something obviously that no one can ever take away from you. And it's your own unique experience. And it's captured. Well, they tried. They tried. I mean, this taxis and the IRS was like, Hey, remember that time you went to <laughs> WrestleMania? Well, we, we want a piece of that. I'm like, Nope, can't take it away from me. IRS. <laughs> Do you remember what your payday was? It was, oh, well, there's a story behind that, but I won't get into it. We've already kind of covered a lot and we've already done the high spot. So <laughs> we did. Yeah. True. Um, but the, the, it was, uh, like you got a hundred dollar cash and then I got a check for the other 150 later. But they it's the experience, it. right? Like who gets a fuck about the money? It's, oh yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. That's cool. No. That's cool. Um, it, did you ever expect, of all people, Taker to be as chatty as he is in the last couple of years? Like, the one guy that was the locker room leader, he was the, the judge in wrestler's court, 
Uh, he was the person that everyone respected, was always good at, at mentoring people. I mean, if, if you knew him behind the scenes, but like as a fan, would you ever expect him to be like, blah, 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 blah. This is what we fucking did here and what we did there on every talk show, on every, he did podcasts. He literally made the circuit during his retirement ceremony, uh, re retirement period, and just opened up like we never seen before. Like of all the guys, would you expect it to be him? Absolutely. Because he's held it in all these years. Right. Finally, he's like, fuck me. I can finally talk and tell can my you story. Can imagine right? like all that stuff that he would have wanted to say, but he, <laughs> like I said, and like your story sort of sort of tells is that he lit, she lived the gimmick as much as he could. Yeah. You know, obviously he didn't go out in full gear like that every time he made a public appearance, but <laughs> like he still had to not break character everywhere he right. went. Yeah. So like you, you like you live that life for so long and then it's finally like a burden is off your shoulders. I guess you can relate it to like, have you ever known people who would like, uh, maybe you're one of these guys, but like, have you ever met people where you're just like, um, like they, they seem quiet and then you talk to them and then they just don't stop talking to you. And yeah. then, and then you, the first thing that goes through my mind is like, Oh, your wife likes you to shut up at home, huh? So you're just <laughs> look for any excuse to talk to anybody about anything because your wife is done with you. Right. Like she won't let you talk like, or so, just, that's a, just an example, right? The undertaker has got to be like that times a thousand. Like he's, he's kept it <laughs> bottled up for 30 years. And now he's like, I'm going to talk about everything that ever happened in wrestling now. So no, I, th I think it surprised cool. me in the least. I think it's cool. I mean, I love the documentary did, you know, with him and how honest he was about, you know, how hurt he was during, you know, the, his last run or, or how embarrassed he was at, at you know, some of his performances and, it was, it was just funny. It was like the Hoover Dam burst and all of the 40 years of the memories are going to finally come out. And I don't give a fuck who wants to listen to it or who doesn't. I'm going to tell my story. Um, it was just a cool thing to see. And mm -hmm. um, I, I did get a chance to meet him years later from my first appearance as a teenager. He was doing a special campaign. And this is before you know he came out and, and did podcasts and stuff. Um, Glenn Jacobs, Kane, was running for mayor of Knox County. Um he and Taker never did personal appearances. From what I heard, he's he's kind of a shy guy. But I mean, he he at this point he never came out. Did the favor for his friend, uh, Kane and Taker signed autographs together and took pictures. And uh, for whatever reason, I don't even know why I had this. I had two copies of his first ever appearance in WWF magazine from 1990. I heard I think it was January 91 when he made the cover. I had one that was sealed, never opened. I had it you know delivered to my my house as a kid through the mail and never ever opened it and here we are 30 something years later i found it in a tote and i'm like huh i wonder if i could ever get take her to sign this i'll probably never fucking meet him but then obviously had the chance um opened it in front of him he's like where'd you get this from I'm like dude you wouldn't believe me but i mean i literally had this for like fucking 35 years or whatever um he's like wow that's so pristine i'm like yeah and uh and he signed it and I have it framed and all that, but it was just weird, like kind of full circle, like meeting him as a kid, you know, when he was like six months in and it probably around the same month where he made the cover to meet him again years later and show that to him and have that moment. Like I fucking kept it sealed in the fucking plastic wrap, never opened it. And now I have the opportunity to do it in front of you. So that was kind of a, a special little moment that I had, but, uh, and you told yeah. him, could you sign this to Rob? from <laughs> stardust <laughs> if i ever meet cody again I'm, I'm i'm gonna have to apologize for that so you're not gonna remember this at all but i just have to get this off my chest i told you i like stardust and i'm very very sorry for that <laughs> it's like i do remember you get again seriously oh you're the guy oh fuck right thanks for bringing it up again <laughs> um dude that was a hell of a story i didn't expect to take the whole show but i mean that was literally like from your perspective, literally like nobody else would ever have that experience except for you and a, a handful of other guys. So I appreciate you sharing that story. It was really, really fun to listen to. Well, thanks for having me on. No one ever really asked. That's fucked up. That's fucked up. Really? Yeah. But Maybe. it also didn't feel like there was any real place to like force it in. <laughs> you know, like most of what I do is like weekly review shows. So true. it's like, That's you true. don't really shoehorn that into where, but I mean, you know, this seems like the, the perfect opportunity, you know? So I, and if I was to tell the story again, the story might be different. Like I might remember some other stuff that happened or, 
not not that I'm lying, but just you know, it's it's going to be a version of it because I'm not going to repeat everything I said word for word. So if I ever tell the story again, I may have a different version of the story that that uh, you know covers the same basic bullet points. But um, and I'm sure I left some stuff out of this. But uh, you know, it was perfect. I, and you know what? I don't even care if you did leave stuff out. You know, you told the story the way you wanted to, and it's it's encaptured forever just like your appearance at WrestleMania in Detroit. So you can always look back at this interview fondly when you're 70 or 80 years old or probably 100 since you're such a clean living guy and take your uh, vitamins and train and believe in yourself. And, uh, I'm going to live way too long. But <laughs> way too long. No, I I'm always a- have this. We always have fun. But I mean, I, I, I'm, I am seriously, though, like I'm honored that you came on and, and told that story because uh, as a fan, it's kind of cool to like live vicariously through you, you know, recalling it. So. I do appreciate you you telling that story. It was it was cool. All right. Well, I'm I'm glad that uh, that you enjoyed it, and you know I think that's a good. If I do say so myself, I think it's a really good fit for Rad Mania. You know. Yeah, a great way to kick off the week. Uh, kayfabe uh, broken here. It's it's a month before WrestleMania. Um, we don't know the card as of yet. We talked a little bit about this off air. Is it strange to you? You said it. You know, like. After 40 fucking years, do you think they'd figure out how to do this? We're a month away, and we we don't know the main event, technically. Uh, we still have Rock playing shenanigans, and there might be a tag team match, as well as Rock versus or uh, Roman versus Cody. Like, what the fuck, dude? Like, we're, we're, you know, they should have figured it out by now. Rock came in, and he rocked everything up. That's <laughs> he, just he what the Rock does. He literally he literally did. We should have known. It's It's like... People have to, it's funny, people just don't realize that they've never liked The Rock. They, they were just fooled into liking him at periods of time. But, I mean, he was only around for like a few short months before they were telling him to die. That's and true. then, you know, like we should have known way back then. Should've like, known. no, the instincts were correct, I guess. <laughs> no, nah, I'm just kidding. But It is uh, good to see him as a heel again, though. Like, fucking guy can do anything, obviously. But, I mean, it's to have that kind of edge and, and kind of like blur the lines between yeah, let me just let me just stop you right the edge okay. okay look this is this is not that's the thing we're not getting like a real rock we're getting we're like the rock is like a a, a delivery system for brian gewertz's terrible comedy <laughs> okay all right well, now we know how you feel about him. Like, what, what is he? What is he? You know, like what uh, uh, is it? Is it cool to say meth head Marys and crackhead Karens? Is that edgy <laughs> and cool in 2024? Like, all right, maybe not that, but I mean, it was kind of cool to see him at that presser they did where, you know, everybody was out there and he was dropping F bombs everywhere. I mean, it was kind of blurring, blurring the lines of a work in a shoot, I guess. It sucks, Rob, but that's okay. Okay. I'm glad if the people hey, have, I'm glad if the people have fun. I'm glad if the people enjoy it. I'm I'm not going to be, you know, like one of those back in my day, the rock, this and that, but, um, <laughs> Hey, that's your opinion. You're the yeah, opinion haver. And that's, that's what true. you do. That is I what do. you, that's literally what you do. I do. I have, um, been, yes, but <laughs> no, that's fair. Are you, uh, do, do you think rock needs to get back in the ring? If they do have that, that tag team match, I mean, is he going to tear another fucking get another hernia and blow every yeah. muscle out of his body? Yeah, he definitely will. Um, but does he need to? No, I think it's I think it's good enough that he's around. Yeah, you know. Um, Do you the think only problem a- the only problem is it's just how it's been shoehorned in. You know, oh, right, right. But but it, it's good it's good for business. You know, I can't say that it's not. Um, well, clearly, there's been other things going on within the company <laughs> that they mm-hmm. had to kind of uh make people fucking do the men in black thing and just fucking shoot the gimmick right. at them and make them forget so which i know people have said that but if you really think about it it's almost like so if you if you were somebody that was lapsed you're not really following along with the things that are going on and you probably don't know anything now if you hear yeah. that the rock is coming back to wrestling like let's say people tell you or you hear it somewhere or read it somewhere hey the rock is back and you're like oh i remember him i like him and then you start watching and following along and then maybe you might see something that you yeah. may did not expect it to see because now that this stuff is coming across your uh your purview with the algorithms and everything and it's like now you now you might hear some news you know and, and it, you might actually shine a light on it by by bringing our back into wrestling um maybe that gets people to actually take a look at 
some of the other right. scandalous stuff that's been going on. So I don't know if it's necessarily a good distraction. Um, Do you think it's a combination of that and, you know, obviously punk getting hurt at, at rumble. Like they literally had to do something to fucking, to, to make a big deal out of it. You know what I mean? Like to make, cause I mean, punk's return was obviously unexpected. Uh, you know, given all the stuff that he said about WWE over the years, um, you know, so it was a big deal. He's going to main event, you know, a WrestleMania. He goes down, all the Vince stuff is going on. You're like, well, what the fuck do we do now? So, I mean, do you think it was a combination of both? Because I, I, I doubt they had that plan going into it. No, I don't. I don't think they had the the plan going into it. But I also do feel that whoever's idea it was. I don't know if it was Dwayne's idea personally, if it was somebody else, maybe Ari, I don't know who, or if Triple H called or whatever. I don't know whose idea it was, but it felt very much like The Rock felt like he was coming in to save the day. Right. Yes. And they completely botched it. Um, Oh, a thousand percent. Like the whole SmackDown Cody saying, I'm not going to challenge right right. now. Here comes The Rock. Like, what the fuck was it? Can we forget that happened? Yeah, well, we're, they want us to, <laughs> they, um, they really do. but they should, that's, that's what I mean. Like to take it back to just me saying like, they should have figured this shit out by now. Like it's yeah. so, there's so many dozens of ways they could have gone about it and they picked the absolute worst one. So, you know, I, I, I really, I really don't think that as many things like are, what's the word here? It's not really as much of a confluence of, uh, or, or it is more of a confluence or a coincidence or something like that. I don't know what I'm trying to say. The point is, I think a bunch of stuff happened and they're just trying to deal with it. And, it's, and, not, and it's not as conspiratorial as all that. That makes sense. No, I mean, that, that, that does make sense. And I mean, we, oh, look, we're still going to get a good event, uh, hopefully. I mean, WrestleMania seems to always deliver uh, no matter what. And uh, I, I'm, I don't watch week to week anymore because I got tired of my intelligence getting insulted for the last fuck seven eight nine years but i always watch wrestlemania and i always will i'll always watch the big three or the big four or whatever you want to call it but uh we'll, we'll get a good event regardless it does suck for punk i mean it really it really does mm-hmm. that's like how many fucking disasters can happen to this, <laughs> to this fucking guy i mean getting hurt twice in AEW and you know being able to come back and quote finish his story uh like cody speaking of which do you put the kill, do you put the belt on Cody at this point, or do you oh. wait and have Roman surpass Hulk Hogan? Oh, I put the belt on Cody last year. That's what I would have done. It was the right time. It was the right uh, story that they told. You know, pun intended. I mean, right. they made it a pun. It was, <laughs> but if you just look at the way they booked it out, I mean, I was going into it thinking like when Cody came back, I was kind of like. For many reasons, I was just like, eh, does anybody really care about Cody? (laughs) But when they set everything up with the Rumble and then they did the promos with him and Roman, Heyman, like all those guys, like I bought it. Yeah. They sold me on it. I was like, okay, well, it has to be now because just as Cody's like got the perfect story to be the guy that has like, of all the people that could win a fake belt from Roman Reigns. Cody would have the most emotional resonance because of Dusty Rhodes, because of the history, because sure. of the history I wasn't even aware of or didn't think about, like with Roman and Dusty yep. and Paul and the Samoans and like all this sort of stuff was like a beautiful cocktail of everything. It was just like, wow, this is actually, this has got to be it. They got to pull the trigger. Um, and not only all of that stuff, but the fact that, the bloodline was pretty much about to be done at that point. They had already been treading water for some time. And it's as much as it's about Cody finishing the story. It's also about a new bloodline chapter and new places for them to go. Right. And I fully believe that that was always the plan. And then I also believe that Vince just at the last second said, no, (laughs) just to do it. Yeah. Forget all the stuff you guys did. Forget all the sense that it made. Forget anything like that. I'm just saying no because, and I'm going to ruin your plans right. because 
I don't like my son-in-law, so fuck him and fuck everybody else. <laughs> and that's it. And that's what happened. And if you actually look at all of the booking after WrestleMania, it makes a lot more sense if you picture Cody as the champ and Roman as not the champ. Right. The trilogy with Brock, the uh, Roman going after the tag team championships. <laughs> Yep. Like all this stuff doesn't really make sense with Roman as champion, but for, for, for Cody, it does. So I think they played out a lot of the booking. Another key element was that Sami Zayn, like him getting the title shot at the chamber and then being served up as the sacrifice to make people want Cody more. Yep. Like that was supposed to be like the Apollo Creed dying moment. <laughs> it's true for Cody. Yep. And they blew it. That's a great. Analogy. It's like what it like. It, it's like that's like at the end of Rocky Four, Drago just knocks out Rocky, and it's like yeah, <laughs> you know, fuck <laughs> right. the story, fuck the story, yeah. And then that's- and then what? And then what does Drago? What like does Drago get a spinoff series? No, but we just gonna kill. We're just gonna kill Rocky. That's that's what we're gonna do. So that's that's how I looked at that. Well, they tried to kill Rocky, right? They Rocky did. Five, he was gonna die, and and the fans die. fucking poo pooed on it during the testing. So. Yeah, but, uh, but, but we're, just we're, just, did it live. we're just talking as if Rocky four went on <laughs> right. by itself in True. its own universe. And True. that's the thing. Like, so I say, I say last year was the time, but this year's the next best time, I guess. Um, and not only just, again, not just for Cody and the story, but damn, the bloodline is really wrung dry. Now there's nothing left. Nothing Seriously, that Jimmy like, is doing yeah. makes any sense. Right. S- Solo Sokoa cannot, only be the guy that's there to lose to the guy that's about to challenge Roman. He's right. got to do something besides that. Like they've got nothing left. Main event Jey Uso is completely like there's there's nothing left. So that's true. It's time to just get it over with. You could take the belt off of Cody on Raw the next night, but you what? just have to end this whole thing so people can stop talking about it and move on. But that's just me. Would you be shocked? Obviously, no, you wouldn't be. That's a stupid way to preface this question. Do you think Rock plays a part in that match and costs Roman the title to set up a match between him and Rock, which would probably be if, if Roman truly is going to retire due to complications from you know from leukemia, which I'm assuming is why he's had a limited schedule. Um, that really tarnishes what Cody would accomplish, right, by having a run in and winning the belt under auspicious circumstances, but. Can you see that happening? I can see it happening because it's a bad idea. Of course. That's the best way to see something happening. Like <laughs> they, right. they're the triple H booking has been for the most part, especially at the top, it's been pretty good, but yeah. there has, you know, there always the potential for somebody to some cook to come in the kitchen and throw a bad ingredient in the pot. Yeah. So you never know. But, um, I, I don't think you you shouldn't do it for obvious reasons. Number one, you like you said, you don't want to tarnish Cody's, you know, if if you're going to keep him babyface. Yeah. So unless you're planting the seeds of him turning heel, but you don't need to do that right now. Yeah. Um, but also not do it because it's so predictable and tired. Right. Like what would be better, which is what should have happened last year. Imagine so. Imagine the rock is just whatever, not, not on, not on Cody's side, but Roman just loses. Yeah. Now Roman can blame the rock for not doing enough to help. True. And then you can spin something out of that, but that's much more realistic. It's the same way that like, if Roman had, if, if, if Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn defeated the Usos at night one of WrestleMania last year, and then Roman loses to Cody in night two, if Roman completely deflects what happened to him and blames the Usos, like calling them losers, even though he lost, that's more heat for him. Yep. That sets up the angle that they eventually did. Yep. And, and all this other stuff, right? And they just they just keep getting it wrong. There's a way to do this stuff, and they're not doing it. It's true. It's true. And that would have been the perfect way to end all that. And the only reason why I can see this happening is, uh, like you said, maybe Cody goes heel. You have a double switch. You know, you have... Roman go face to end his career, uh, maybe, and and Cody gets that hero run as, as a champion, and you know, obviously, several storylines can can branch off of that. Um, that would be the only way to salvage 
not tarnishing Cody's fucking story, right? Just by having him do the double switch. That's the only way I could see that happening. Uh, and then obviously we get the Rock and Roman match that we've, I don't say wanted, but they've been teasing for the last several years. To me, it should have happened in Hollywood, um, but it is what well, it it's is. Just, it's just kind of silly to imagine, like, you know, like like I was saying about people taking wrestling seriously in terms of like the whole idea of it's kind of silly. Like the idea of like a a famous movie actor coming to fight a wrestler for some reason. Like it, it's <laughs> it, it's just it's just so it's just so funny to me. If you, there's a whole generation of kids that were born and grew up and only know Dwayne Johnson from movies. True. So this got to be amazing for them. Uh, But if you also coincidentally became a wrestling fan on your own as a, you know, but, um, you know, it's like, like mommy, that's the guy from jungle cruise. Like you you gotta be, it's gotta be something, right? I was gonna say doom, but you went to jungle cruise route, which makes sense. But yeah, Yeah, like, so, so it, it, in that it's kind of silly. It's even sillier if it's about a wrestling championship, you know, and like that, like that press conference, like, where they're putting up family trees on the screen. It's like, <laughs> so wait a minute. So why are you guys fighting then? Right, like, exactly. Yeah. I thought right. you just said family was more important than anything. And there's only one family and family's blood and blood sticks together and blah, blah, blah. And now we're going to fight. What? What is yeah. it? What was any of that? But anyway, yeah. So I just think um, you can eventually get to that, uh, a match between those two, if that's what you really want. Um but it's, it's it, we never had to turn rock heel in the first place. There were ways to get to this right. to sort of keep all and I wouldn't turn Cody either because he's doing so phenomenally well as a baby face now, which I never thought. I just thought he's inherently unlikable and I didn't think people would get behind him, but they really right. have. So, so and he hasn't coded it up like he used to, you know, in the past or in AEW or any of those other times. I was going to um, say like AEW, he was kind of a fucking like egomaniac, right? Like he wouldn't yeah. come out through either of the two tunnels. He had to come out through the big fucking gimmick in the middle and he had to have the uh, his, you know, his entrance pyro. music had entrance music. Right, exactly. It's like he was kind of a douchebag if you really want to look back in his AEW run, but for some Would've reason been fine if he was a heel. Yes. But he wasn't. wasn't. And, and that's put- why but he's but he's doing very well now, yes. and I think they should ride that as long as they can. I agree because you never know what's going to happen, especially in you know guys like Punk's case. You never know when someone's going to have an accident and not be able to wrestle ever again. Honestly, I mean, you just right. you never ever know. And you're right; they should have struck while the iron was hot last year. But hindsight being twenty twenty, if they don't do it now, if they don't do it now, what happens to Cody? Is he uh, over? Is he over enough to survive, or do you think people are like, "Fuck it, I don't care. I'm not going to get behind him anymore." From a dipshit wrestling fan perspective, like the IWC. Well, I could never lower myself to think <laughs> in that terms, but so I'll just say that I'd just say that he could survive it a little bit longer, but not forever. Yeah. Um, they're going to have to do it at some point, and. The sooner they get it over with, the better. And if they, like I said, if they really don't want him to be the guy, just take it back off him. Yeah, true. But give him the moment. Give him the moment, yeah. Give the people the moment. Right. Let your stories branch out from there and then decide what you want to do. But, you know, you can, he, he's not in that, like the guy that gets this close and, om- and, and almost wins, but never does. That's the Sami Zayn role. True. That's literally Sami Zayn's role. It's been his role. Yep. And that's what makes him Sami Zayn. That's right. And then one day he can be the guy that does win the one the one time. Not right now, but someday. But that's not Cody. Cody's like they've already booked him to be too strong for that role. So True. it doesn't even make sense that game. he would lose. Yeah, he's in the cover of the new game. He's got all the, the DLC and all that. Like they're positioning him to be the guy for However long it is, it could, like you said, could be a day, could be a month, could be six months. I don't think he's going to go as long as Roman. Clearly, I mean, there's no need to. Um, but then you're going to have the Roman fanatics. They're going to get pissed off that he doesn't keep the title long enough to surpass. You know how long Hulk Hogan had a fake title. Uh, so I mean, well, what, what does that mean if he does? It doesn't mean anything. It's just something else. They can no, I mean, say, none but... of it means any. Literally, right. none of it even even matters. Right. And you're story. still not, and you're still not Bruno, even if it did mean something. So it's like. <laughs> 
True. Well, it's true. Or Backlund, right? Didn't Backlund have it longer than Hogan? Yeah, yeah longer. Yeah. So yeah, it is what it is. Hey, look, you got to respect Roman for going through a lot of bullshit, right? Like all the fucking suffering, suck at that bullshit he had to do and, you know, pouring dog shit on fucking, you know, Baron Corbin. I mean, he stuck around, you know, and, and he always had the talent. He always had to look. Obviously, he has the lineage, but I mean, he's been the best we've seen of this, you know, current generation. So, either way, uh, whether it's you know from the pencil or not, the fucking guy knows knows the business, and he's he's done very very well. And his heel run um, initially was booked perfectly, especially with Heyman being in the mix and all that. So, it's been fun for the last few years to watch him. To uh, but he's got nothing left to prove. Yeah. So if you don't put it on it's Cody now, it's it's what's what was the point of of putting Cody on the cover of the game and and going through this whole thing all over again? So I mean, it's just if they don't do it now, I, I don't know. I, I just none of it make, none of it makes sense. But uh, in any event, have you played Two K Twenty Four yet? By the way, no, no. Come on, man, you're a gamer. You don't play wrestling games. I don't play WWE Two K games. Really, it's really good this year, like, yeah. and it was good last year too. Like. Thank God 2K20 sucks so much that we got rid of Ukes and now we have a really, really good engine to play with. But, um, uh, you know, maybe uh, I, I haven't played the showcase mode yet, but maybe you're in the game as a, as a virtual <laughs> druid. Ooh. Well, then. Um, <laughs> Where's the royalty check of that? Yeah, it's, <laughs> that's the case, right? <laughs> yeah. No, nah, but it, it's uh, I'm glad that the game is doing very well and the people are happy with it. Um, just. Just nothing for me in it. So that's fair. That's fair. Where can people find you on social media? Uh, obviously, you were part of the Hameen Media Group as well, still. That's right. Hameen Media Group uh, for plenty of shows with me and at Opinion Haver on all of your social media platforms or platforms in general, gaming platforms such as like PlayStation Network. If I had an Xbox, my Xbox Live was Opinion Haver. So I probably still have it. And people are probably trying to enter it on Xbox Live and be like, this name is not available. And they're like, damn it. What is this guy doing? It hasn't been active for 10 years. What? <laughs> uh, you know, so, or, or twitch.tv slash opinion havers. So any, any, any opinion havers, you'll be able to tell that it's me for sure. Any uh, pretenders uh, will be weeded out as necessary. Well, like we said earlier in the show, you are the most unique person uh, that is an opinion haver. Uh, or who, maybe whoever lived. <laughs> Guys, we have uh, a lot more going on for Rad Mania 6. We got lots of big guests. We got Barry Horowitz coming up next. Were you a big Barry, Barry Horowitz fan uh, as a kid? No, of course not. Why would anybody be a big Nobody. Barry Horowitz fan? You only grow to respect him later as you yes. like really understand what it takes to to do the kind of stuff that he did. So I'm fascinated by the enhancement talent. I really am. I, I got a chance to speak with with Dusty Wolf, uh, who, was, who was really, really cool. Um, I got to speak with um, oh, uh, Brooklyn Brawler, Steve Lombardi. So, I mean, like, I, I'm i a mark for, for the guys that made the guys. I mean, not a lot of fans know uh, what it takes to put guys over like that. It's 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 an art form, for real. But, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to have Barry on the show, who did well. He did, he did him and Brawler did better than most people uh, and kind of got a, a small run, at least. Uh, I don't think Barry did a WrestleMania, but I know, obviously, Brawler did against the Red Rooster, and I think he did a Battle Royal later on. But I mean, uh, how come you never made it to that level, Vet, to close the show? I just quit. That's fair. No, that's fair. That's another. And for all the reasons stated previously, <laughs> and these just they ultimately, like when I watch when when I watch the guys and girls now like whatever company it is, whether it's WWE, AEW, Impact, New Japan, all these, you know, MLW, any of these NWA, any of these people, whether I know them personally and are they're friends of mine or whether they're strangers and I just see them out there doing their best, like they're all my brothers and sisters. Yep. But at the same time, Maybe perhaps paradoxically, they're not my people. <laughs> right. Like right. I'll, I'll always have that sort of bond where I root for them. Like I did when I was a fan, but now differently having seen the dark, you know, underbelly 
and realizing what they really go through that the fans really just don't appreciate whenever they're getting out there on social media and it takes no effort to shit on them, but they <laughs> just do it anyway because they have no idea what, what the truth of the matter is and they just feel like they have the agency to do it. Thanks, internet. Um, but when I, I see all of them, like I'm with them and I, I'm rooting for them, even when I'm critical of them, I still want them to do all those things because just like when I was a kid, I didn't want to do it. I wanted them to do it for me and I wanted to appreciate them for that. So it still goes on to this day, but ultimately that's their road to travel and it's not mine anymore. That is true. And that's uh, another story for another day, but uh, I do appreciate you having on brother. Uh, always good to talk to you. Uh, we should do some non-wrestling stuff again. Uh, Definitely in, in the future. Stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. This is, if you didn't tell that story, I don't know what the fuck we we're going to talk about during the show. So I'm, <laughs> I'm glad uh, you were a fantastic storyteller, but uh, I do appreciate you coming on. Thank you, Rob. And uh, have a great rest of your Rad Mania week. Well, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Uh, guys, hope you enjoyed this show. We will be back tomorrow for Rad Mania Day 2. For the vet, I am Rad Rob. Check him out everywhere. Again, he is the one and only opinion ever. Anybody else that's an opinion ever? Fuck you. He's the original. Like, get over it. There's nothing you can do about it. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care, guys. Thank you for listening to this episode of RTW Rewind. For all the latest news and announcements, please follow us on Twitter at RTW Brand. You can also follow Rad Rob at Rad Rob Gaming. You've been listening to RTW Rewind exclusively here on the Rad Rob Radio Network. Thank you.